Most of us load up our gas tanks until they're full, whenever we're out of fuel. Let's face it, it's more convenient and it will save you some unnecessary extra trips to the gas station. If you're the kind of person that does that too, you'll be familiar by now with that noisy thud, which you'll hear the pump make after it's finished loading up your tank with gas. It's the sound that lets you know the process is done and that you can safely remove the nozzle from the vehicle. Ever wondered how gas pumps got so smart? Let's look at the engineering process behind it. Each time we load up the gas tanks with fuel, we replace the air inside with the liquid. That air escapes through a small pipe featured in the gas nozzle. As more pressure builds up inside the tank, that pressure is released as the air escapes. Each time we begin pumping the gas in the tank, its pipe lets go of that air really quickly. That air comes out with such pressure that it's enough to hold the gas valve open. Once there's no remaining air to come out because the tank is filled with fuel, we get a small suctioning force that moves the valve back to its initial closed position. There's no electronic sensor or device behind it all, just this little pressure and suction that are called the Venturi effect. Sure, you might think that if you add a couple of drops of gas after the pump has stopped, won't be such a bad thing. It might even give you a little extra time before you have to get back to the gas station. But that is in fact potentially dangerous and you should refrain from topping off. Most types of fuel need some room to stretch. So adding that little extra to your tank may lead to some unneeded extra pressure. It can even reach your car's carbon filter, which only works for vapor. All these steps can damage your car engine sooner than expected. If you've been driving for a while now, you know this for sure. Even if the gas light goes on, you still have some miles to go before your car completely stops working. Depending on the type of car you have, you'll surely get to the next gas station in time. It might go anywhere from 40 to 110 miles before it stops running altogether. But it's best to check the specifications of each car manufacturer. It might also be related to the size of your gas tank too. Here's another extra tip to remember when you're heading for the gas station, which might save your life. Once you get out of the car, be sure to touch the vehicle first before reaching the gas pump, especially during winter time. That's because of a little thing called static electricity. And it's more noticeable during the colder season because we tend to wear clothes that are more prone to this effect, like nylon or polyester. As you move around the car, you can create static electricity. Once you touch the gas nozzle, a spark can occur. And when that happens near flammable solutions, it's never a good thing. Just make sure to touch a metal part of the car so that the effect is annulled and you can proceed with loading up the tank safely. To keep your car in tip-top condition, never let your gas tank level go below one-fourth of its total amount. Because once you reach the last bits of fuel inside the tank, it may create condensation which will dilute the gas and potentially damage the engine. More so, those last drops of gas might not be the best quality fuel. At the bottom of the gas tank, most cars have some fuel sediment, which isn't the best for your car engine either. So make sure you make regular visits to the gas station, way before your emergency lights start going all over the place. When the driver forgets to shift while driving, there will be a high-speed, low-speed driving or low-speed driving at a high speed. In case of low-speed, high-speed driving, the engine needs more fuel to supply in order to achieve a certain speed. But this will cause increased fuel consumption. High-speed driving needs a lot of gasoline into the engine at low speed. But it cannot fully burn, which will lead to the carbon buildup. To prevent it, put the pedal to the floor and blow the junk out. If you are mostly driving commuting miles, then it might be good to take your car out on the freeway and let it go. But again, this will not totally prevent carbon buildup. If you don't have a garage or you need to have your car parked outside for longer periods, specialists recommend you wash it weekly. It may seem like a bit of a splurge, but if you consider things like acid rain or bird droppings, you may want to protect the finish of your car for as long as possible. Or hey, you can even turn it into an afternoon workout. Washing, vacuuming, and waxing your car will burn somewhere around 1,100 calories. Same goes for your sunroof if your car is equipped with one of those. Car maintenance specialists say that you need to open the glass or metal panel often to ensure the drain holes aren't blocked by debris. 
To check if the drains are working properly, pour some water onto them. You'll need someone to help out here, so check if the water flows out correctly. If it's not draining, it will most likely end up inside the car, so you might want to have it checked out professionally. But washing it way too often or visiting automated car washes can be detrimental too. It's all in the balance, I know. Again, this is another one that requires a balance. Some car enthusiasts have noticed that bristles on the automated car washes can be a bit too rough, and they can potentially harm your car's paint or even dislodge a windshield wiper. It's best if a car is washed by hand and with some soap designed to be gentle with car paint. Making sure you have the same types of tires isn't just for the aesthetics of it. It's of utmost importance for some sensitive features in your car, like the ABS system. Mixing and matching tires may damage the speedometer and the sensors that have to do with the car wheels. Different types of tires react differently to the same amounts of pressure or friction, which may unbalance your car overall. If you live in an area where you don't feel your car is safe at all times, you may want to think about installing a tracking system on your car as well. It may need you to consult with a professional to do so, but if your car is ever displaced, most of these systems rely on wireless and GPS technology to emit a signal, showcasing your vehicle's location. But if that's a bit too much, here's a basic three-item security checklist you can remember to follow each time you want to make sure your car is safe and sound. Firstly, lock it each and every time. Even if you believe to be in an area without much theft, an unlocked car parked outside can seem tempting for uninvited guests. Next, carefully consider your parking location. That means close to where you live, if possible, and in a well-lit area. This should discourage any potential intruders from barging in. Crooks are not big fans of well-lit areas. Lastly, always remove purses, cell phones, or any other valuable items from your car before leaving it unsupervised. If you do, however, need to leave some things in the car, make sure to place them somewhere not as visible, like in the trunk or in other compartments of your vehicle. Another way is to keep your car nice and shiny as often as possible. If the vehicle looks clean and well taken care of, people might assume that you have an effective alarm system and GPS as well. Basically, it's another effective way to discourage any potential damage before it even happens. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.